other country and western stuff. Though. Might be Throwback Thursday for you today. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, Charlie Pride is cool. <laughs> How do you handle Cordero now? I mean, he's obviously he never two kicks on, on Sunday. He's become such a big part of the offense. Does that change maybe what y'all do with him in special teams? So, yeah, you know, from the beginning of the season, Mike, it's a week-by-week -week base uh, decision that, you know, Coach Smith uh, and myself, we decide on when it comes to his value. I mean, obviously, he's very valuable on special teams, but what his workload is going to be on special teams in correlation to offense. He's been doing a great job, you know, as a, as a teammate and as a player with any opportunity that he gets, making the most out of it, whether it's on offense or special teams. So it's a week-by-week -week thing, and it's whatever is best for the team for that particular week. I feel like Avery has shown enough that you would feel good about him being the primary kick returner? Or? If he's the returner back there, he's back there for a reason because we trust and we believe in him as a, as a team. Coach Smith and myself, we believe in uh, Avery at, as him being our returner, whether he's the punt returner, whether he's doing punt return or kick return. And again, that's week by week. Whatever role that he has, we trust him. And that's the reason why he's on the team and continues to get better each and every week. And I look forward to seeing him you know, play well on Sunday. But, you know, Coach, how do you prepare for them with, uh, you know, their their return situation kind of murky? Uh, uh, maybe uh, Coach Harris threw out Giovanni Bernard earlier in the week as a possibility, but how do you get ready for, for that? Well, going against, you know, Coach Armstrong, which I hold in very high regards as a special teams coordinator, their units play fast and they play aggressive and they play the game smart. So being able to, whoever the returner is, whether it's, you know, Darden back there, whether it's, you know, Miller, whether it's Bernard, our approach is we got to, every week, we got to go play downhill, be aggressive, be disciplined with our leverage and our lane discipline and attack the football. So when it comes to those guys, we're preparing for whoever's back there. We're looking at all options and we're going to be prepared come Sunday, go out there and play at a high level. Parker talks a lot about physicality and toughness, wanting to be a physical team. Mm -hmm. is, in your opinion, is special teams an avenue for guys to demonstrate that? Oh, for sure. The, the game is, you know, Josh, is about speed and space, but there is a point of time where there's a point of contact. You know, offense, defense, there's a line of scrimmage. You know, on special teams, especially on kickoff, kickoff return, that line of scrimmage changes. And on punt, there's a, there's a line of scrimmage, and then you get downfield with speed, and then there's a, a point, of, point of attack. So when we get to those point of attack areas, whether we're using our speed or using our power, we want to be physical at the point of attack. You know, Coach Smith talks about the run game being a physical play. The return game is a physical play. So that looks like a big run play for us. And we want to be physical. We want to propose our will when we're playing against teams. And that's the mindset that we want to have in special teams, whether we're covering kicks or if we're returning kicks. We want to be physical. And we want to be aggressive, too. At the same time, being disciplined. That's why we talk about on special teams, mean but clean. We want to be mean, physical, aggressive, but do it within the rules of the game. Tell pretty quickly after a few special team snaps about a guy's willingness to play that way? Uh, it depends. It depends. Also, too, I, I think there's a variable of getting to know the player, how he is, you know, and his personality and his characteristics and how that correlates to him playing the game. Because some guys, you know, they may be afraid of to, of to make a mistake, and sometimes people get that confused as them not being physical rather than letting those guys know, hey, you can make a mistake on this play, but as long as you do it with this leverage, as long as you're playing physical and you're playing fast and being disruptive. So I think it goes case by case. It depends on the player that you're dealing with. And I, I look at, and I know Coach Smith looks at the off, uh, you know, the mental side of it too, how that player is when it comes to playing the game. You had um, Thomas only in camp for a week and his special teams player for the week. Um, what did you like about his performance in terms of how he punted the ball in a way that matched up with how you were trying to implement your coverage? You know, congrats to Thomas, you know, and then also congrats to the punt team, too, for being able to protect and go downfield and cover because, again, this is it's a – Team, team effort when it comes to those, those type of accolades. When it comes to, comes to Morstead, he did a great job of preparing throughout the week in short notice, coming in, learning the terminology, learning how we want to operate. And the biggest thing, too, wherever he kicks the ball, we're being on the same page and making sure the punt and the coverage works together. So I thought he did a, you know, did a good job his first week coming in, being able to operate and being able to hold for coup as well when it came to PAT and field goals, which I know one field goal was taken off due to a penalty on Jacksonville, but we still made it, still went through the uprights. But I thought he did a great job 
you know, throughout the week with his energy, his preparation, communication, all those things, and being a pro. You know, he's done it for a long time, and it, we've had the privilege to have him in the building along with other punters and being able to come in and, and just, you know, hit the ground running. So it's a big, big testament to who he is as a person. I know Keith used to talk about the decision making back there on the returners and so forth. How how was Avery's decision making uh, on his returns uh, from the kickoff spot? Oh, he's he's continuing to make great decisions. That's again, that's why he's back there. Because as a team, we trust we trust him. When he's carrying the ball, he's carrying the fate of the organization in his hands. So we trust him with making those right decisions, okay? Because you could be a really good returner, but if your decision-making is subpar, then that defeats the purpose. You can't do anything with the ball, whether you're not fielding a kickoff return, you're muffing a punt, all those different things, or you're catching a, a punt return inside the, the five-yard line, you know, whether you could let that bounce and be a touchback. Throughout the season, he's continued to get better with reps, and he's, he's a football player, and we appreciate him, and as a team, we trust him back there as a returner. What are some of the, of the things that as a return man transitions from college to the pros, some like some of those adjustments that like that, that, that he's going through that he has to make that, that may be different when you're operating with special teams guys at this level. I think overall with returners, it comes with the details. You spend more time on, you know, evaluating the punter that you're going against. You're playing them indoor, you're playing them outdoor. What's the wind pattern at the stadium? What's his gross? All right, how is his offset? He likes to punt this way when he wants to, got to have it punt, when he wants to flip the field. Or if he's trying to punt the ball away from you, he may lean one way and he could, like a right-footed punter, he could offset this way. But not only is he going to punt this way, he has the ability to hook the ball and bring it back this way in, com in comparison to if a right-footed punter is pointed this way. He's going to punt this way. So understanding those little details, understanding the gunner's releases, how are the gunner's going to play you? Are they going to try to cut off the field? Or are they just going to stay outside of you? All those little details. And then also, too, understanding the philosophy and the scheme of what we're running, return-wise or rush-wise, and being able to make the right decisions when it comes to that. So I look at you know a punt returner as kind of like playing batter you know, in baseball. You got to make sure you're swinging at the right pitches. You know, you can't just swing at everything. You could be dynamic and you could have, you could have a strong arm and, and, f and hit home runs, but if you're just swinging at everything, you're striking out. So as a, as a kickoff returner and as a punt returner, you want to make sure you're swinging at the right balls and making sure you're making the right decisions when it comes to that, if that makes sense. Yeah, is, is there less space in, like, in, for a return man in the pros than there is in college in terms of how much time he has to react from when he catches the yeah. ball or just in terms of coverage being more precise? Is, is there more room to maneuver? Or? Yeah, well, you know, you, get, you have more room in kickoff return than you do pump return sure. because of the, the space element of it. And then you can't control where that ball's being punted from in pump return. And then in college, the one thing about college, everybody could re release once the ball snapped okay. and punt in the NFL, only the end man of the formation, they could release. Everybody else, have to, they have to protect until the ball's punted. They have that one to two yard cushion. So that's the variable right there. How many people are downfield when they're getting down cover? So you see in the college football, if you watch a college football game, whether it's tomorrow or the next day, there's a lot of fair catches or there's a lot of balls on the ground because, and there's not a lot of returns in punt return because of how many coverage got, cover guys are downfield in coverage. Because the ball's being snapped, from the long snapper to everybody that's on the line of scrimmage, they're running downfield, and that punter's holding the ball, holding the ball, and they're punting it. So it might be a 3-5 hang time, and he kicks it 45 yards, but it's being caught. A 3-5 hang time in the NFL, that, th that ball's being returned. You mentioned, you mentioned Morse. Has he done enough in a short period of time where he's your guy going forward? He's the guy on the roster right now. So we're only we're coaching the 53 men that are on the roster. And that's what matters. Just like I said the weeks prior, whatever guys we have on the roster that week, we're going to coach the hell out of those guys and, and put the best 48 on the field come Sunday. Have you grown more comfortable over the season in your role from you know, starting the year and the, the first year in this position? Have you grown in certain aspects of coaching? Yes. Um, every day I'm growing. You know, the three worst words you could say is I got it. Because once you say I got it, I mean, you're taking away the willing to learn, willingness to learn. Um, you only get better with reps. I say that about our players on the field, and I say that about our players off the field, and that goes side, it coincides with me as a coach and our coaching staff. We only get better with reps. This is a new staff. Every week, every day, we're getting better. And the biggest thing that um, I try to, you know, push for our guys, and Coach Smith does the same thing, and, and it's for myself as well, is staying in the present. 
that's when you become the best version of yourself, whether you're on the field or off the field. When you've had your best moments in life, you know, Chris, is you were in the present. You weren't worried about the past or something to happen. You weren't worried about what was going on the next day, nervous or anxious about the outcome. When you're at your best, you're in the present. And that's why the present's a gift. So that's something that every day I try to push our players and I push myself and our players push me as well to make sure that we're being obsessed with the present. That's how we could become better both on and off the field. Uh, overall, just um, I think just more getting to know our team, getting to know the players in the room and, you know, being able to adapt, you know, week in and week out. If there is, you know, different players on the roster, different players from practice squad are being elevated and, you know, finding what they do best and putting them in the best position to be successful on the field. And that's a great challenge and it's a great problem to have to be able to work day in, day in and day out to find different ways to put our players in positions to help this team win football games. Are any special characteristics to their uh, their punter and kicker opinion and suck up? Well, opinion has a strong leg, you know, as a punter and as a kickoff guy. And he's even attempted a field goal uh, this year, you know, a deeper field goal. Um, he he has the uh, the he has the ability to hit the ball outside the numbers on his punts, long levers. He's a big guy. Suck up, you know, he's been consistent as a field goal kicker. He's been doing it for a long time. Um, and we have a great opportunity, a great challenge this week to go against those guys. And again, making sure we're making the right decisions, both both punt return and kick return, to put our offense in great field position. Could you get a bonus for that tackle? <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, gets to get, he gets to be put on the teach tape for a wrap and roll tackle. So, um, he, you know, Koo day in, day out, he's a pro. He does a great job. He gives great energy to that to our room and into the huddle on kickoff. He loves being out there, and I say day in and day out, he's a football player that just so happens he kicks. You know, he played DB in high school. I actually started out as a receiver. They ran the wing tee, got tired of blocking, and then moved to DB. So he's a football player. He just loves the kick. You know, he loves being out there with the players, loves playing the game. So we appreciate his effort and his mindset that he goes about the game. Does any part of you cringe when he's in the middle of the action like that just from an injury standpoint? I mean, obviously, that's with anybody with injuries, but he's doing a great job. He, sometimes he gets too aggressive, but again, you rather tell a guy, you rather pull a guy back than tell him, hey, you need to go and be, help us out. So, but he's been good. He's been great for the room. And I mean, every day he, he's a pro's pro and we appreciate him as long as all the other specialists and all the other men in the room. Silly question, but asking it anyway. What's the value of having a kicker like Koo versus when you see some of the other issues around the league? You know, it's invaluable. It's a great opportunity having the, one having the privilege to work with Koo prior to coming here and knowing how he is both on and off the field. But his mindset, his preparation, his attitude, the way he approaches the game, that's invaluable. And it's a privilege to be able to, you know, come in every day at work. You know, get my feet on the ground once I get out of bed and know that these are the type of men that we are working with and being able to coach, you know, Koo plus the other guys. But if you're talking about Koo, it's invaluable, I would say. Just his mindset and his approach to the game and then his, his physical ability of what he could bring to the table when it comes to kicking off, being able to uh, hit field goals consistently. And then he's an athlete, too, that just so happens kicks. How, how hard is it to find a guy like that? I think it's very hard. It's very hard to find guys like that. And that's why as us as coaches and evaluators, we do a great job of doing our homework and our research on players and finding out their backgrounds and, you know, what other sports did they play, you know, where they come from, you know, when it comes to like different positions and stuff like that. I think it's, you know, this day and age, finding guys that can play multi-sports, you know, whether you're recruiting in college or you're evaluating players in the NFL, I think that's big, finding guys that are multi-sport athletes. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. You guys have a great day. Thanks, Coach.